Once there was a woodcutter with two children and their stepmother. The boy's name was Hansel, and the girl's name was Gretel. They lived so poorly that sometimes there was not even anything to eat. And then one evening he lay in bed, pondering how to feed the children further. His wife advised him to have children in the forest, light a fire, give a piece of bread each and leave them there not all four of them die of hunger. But the woodcutter did not agree. And until then, his wife persuaded him that he finally agreed. And the children, because of hunger, also could not sleep and heard everything that their stepmother said to their father. And when the parents fell asleep, Hansel secretly rushed out of the house. The moon was shining brightly, and the white stones glittered like coins. Hansel pocketed as many of them as he could fit. Then he returned home and the children went to bed. In the morning, the stepmother came to the children, gave each of them a piece of bread, and they all went to the forest together. On the way, Hansel threw out white stones one by one. When they arrived at the clearing, my father began to light a fire. He ordered the children to sit near the fire and make sure that it didn't go out, while they and their stepmother would go for more firewood. They sat, sat, tired, and fell fast asleep. When the children woke up, it was a dark night all around. And when a full month had risen in the sky, Hansel took his sister by the hand and went, looking for the way through the pebbles, which glittered like new coins, and showed them the way. They walked all night long, and at dawn they came to their father's house. Some time passed. And the children again heard how the stepmother one night began to beg their father to get rid of the children. He refused, but his wife did not want to listen to him, she cursed and expressed all sorts of reproaches to him. When the parents fell asleep, Hansel, like the last time, wanted to collect stones, but the stepmother locked the door and the boy could not Thank leave you. the house. Thank you. Early in the morning, the children were given a piece of bread each even less than the previous time. On the way to the forest, Hansel shredded his piece in his pocket and threw the crumbs on the ground. The stepmother took them even further into the forest. Again a big fire was lit, and the father ordered the children to watch the fire while they and their stepmother chopped some more wood. When lunchtime came, Gretel shared her piece of bread with Hansel. And they fell asleep. We woke up when the dark night fell. And then a month came up, and they got together on their way, but they could not find a single crumbs, because thousands of birds fluttering in the forest had long been eating those crumbs. So the children walked for a very long time, but they could not get out of the forest. Suddenly, the road led them to the hut. Coming closer, the children saw that the house was all built of bread and biscuits, and the windows were made of pure sugar. Hansel reached up and broke off a piece of the roof, while Gretel went to the window and began gnawing at its windows. And then the door in the hut opened wide, and the old woman came out, leaning on a crutch. Hansel and Gretel were so scared that they even dropped their tidbits from their hands. And the old woman was kind and invited them to her hut. There was already abundant food on the table, milk, cookies, apples, and nuts. After dinner, the old woman made two clean beds for the children, and Hansel and her sister thought they were in heaven. But the old woman only pretended to be affectionate, but in fact she was an evil witch, who built her bread hut for this purpose in order to lure children. Early in the morning, while the children were sleeping, she took uh -oh. Hansel and put him in a small cage. And she ordered her sister to do everything that the wicked witch demanded of her. The old woman decided to fatten the boy in order to eat him later. So Gretel began to cook the most delicious food for Hansel, and she herself got nothing but leftovers. Some time passed, and the boy did not get fat. Then the old woman did not want to wait any longer, and decided to cook and eat Hansel. She ordered Gretel to light the stove and apply water. When the stove warmed up, the old woman ordered her to climb into the stove and see if it was hot enough. So she wanted to push the girl into the fire and bake her. But Gretel knew what was on her mind. She said that she did not know how to get in there, and asked the witch to show herself. The old woman got angry and climbed into the oven. 
Then Gretel pushed her and slammed the shutter behind the witch. Wow, how terribly the old woman hauled then. Gretel, meanwhile, rushed to Hansel and opened the cage. Having freed their brother, they went to the witch's room, in which there were boxes of pearls and precious stones in all corners, filled their pockets with them, and went home. For several days the children were looking for their way back. The forest seemed more and more familiar, and at last they saw their father's house in the distance. How glad he was to see his children alive. Hansel and Gretel poured on the floor all the pearls and gems they had taken from the witch. There was no need to think about food. And they began to live, live, and rejoice. And the father drove the evil stepmother out of the house. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Once her rich father married an evil stepmother. She settled in the house with her two daughters. Their faces were beautiful and white, but their hearts were evil and cruel. And then came a difficult time for the poor girl. From morning until late in the evening, they forced her to do dirty work, carry water, heat the stove, cook food, wash dishes, and do laundry. And besides, the half-sisters did their best to upset her as much as possible they mocked her, poured peas and wheat into the ashes, and she had to sit and pick them out. In the evening, when she was tired of work, she had to go to bed not in bed, but on the floor, next to the stove. And because she was always in ash, dust, and dirty, the sisters called her Cinderella. But then it happened one day that the king started a feast, which was supposed to last for three whole days, and called all the beautiful girls of the country to the holiday so that his son could choose a bride for himself. When the two named sisters learned that they, too, could come to the feast, they instantly began to dress up and preen. Cinderella also wanted to go dancing, but her stepmother did not let her go, because she had no dress or shoes, and she was dirty. And then the evil stepmother poured a bowl of wheat into the ashes and said that if Cinderella collected it in two hours, then she could go with her sisters. Cinderella went out into the garden and cried. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds. They swooped down on the ash and began to peck, and so they chose all the grains in a bowl. In less than an hour, they finished their work, and everyone flew back. Cinderella brought a bowl to her stepmother, began to rejoice, thinking that she could go to the feast. But her stepmother would not let her in any way. She turned her back on Cinderella and hurried with her two daughters to the ball. When there was no one left at home, Cinderella sat down on the floor and cried with grief. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds, and they threw off their dress and shoes shiny and all in gold. She quickly put on this dress and came to the bride. They saw her stepsisters and stepmother and thought that it must be some strange princess she was so beautiful in her golden dress. It never occurred to them that it was Cinderella. The prince came out to meet her, took her hand, and they began to dance. And he liked Cinderella so much that he did not want to dance with any other girl. She danced until the evening and wanted to return home, but the prince asked her to see her off. He wanted to know whose beautiful girl this is and where she lives. But Cinderella ran away from him and climbed onto the dovecot. The prince ordered to destroy the dovecot, but there was no one in it. And nowhere near could he find his beautiful stranger. No one could have guessed that Cinderella was rescued by pigeons that took her home. The prince was upset and went to the palace with his head down. And suddenly he saw a shoe lifted it up it was so small and elegant and all of pure gold. The prince guessed that when Cinderella ran away from him, the shoe from her left foot remained on one of the steps. The prince was delighted and ordered to find the mistress of this shoe, and to whom it suits he will marry that one. The parents returned from the ball, they saw that Cinderella was asleep in her shirt on ash, 
and a dim light was on by the stove. Both sisters went to their rooms, hoping that tomorrow they would be lucky enough to put on the golden slipper. The next day, the prince came to their house and said that everyone who wants to try on the shoe of his future wife should come out. Hello. Two sisters came out, and the stepmother locked Cinderella in the house and did not let her out. The older sister tried it on a small shoe. The younger sister tried it on the shoe as great. The prince was about to leave, but Cinderella climbed out of the window and ran out to him. And she put on a shoe, and it just fit her. The prince looked into her eyes and recognized in her the very beautiful girl with whom he danced. He took Cinderella, put her on a horse and rode off to play a wedding with her. And he ordered the sisters and stepmother to be locked in their house and never let them out of there. This is how they were punished for their malice and deceit.